So one of the games that Jane Street invented is this game called Figgy. Um, Figgy is like a kind of Jane Street state that's different from a lot of these firms, maybe like SIG, for example, you know, they play a lot of poker and it's a lot of kind of text holdem based curriculum. The Figgy, it's, it's modeled off of an open outcry market. So almost like the Chicago pit traders, um, you know, type trading, trading experience where you know, there are four or five players and you're sort of bidding for these things. And so you're quoting these, I'm, you know, three bid spades, you know, I'm offering you know, five for diamonds or something like this. And so you're quoting these spreads and you can make a lot of your money in this game by by sort of capturing this this spread that you're quoting and it really teaches you how to be a market maker in this toy example and so um i think it's a very kind of valuable game if if any kind of like young you know aspiring creators want to kind of get a couple friends together and, and try to learn it they even just made a um a digital version of the game as well that you can play online which i've uh, definitely cracked into a time or two so you've talked about Figgy at Jane Street, and you mentioned SIG making their interest by poker, and also how you met Richard Crape while at a poker tournament. You know, I think it's pretty universal that people agree that these games help a lot for trading. The type of thinking is very similar. Why do you think that is? Yeah, maybe as compared to chess, where chess is a complete information game, and it's really training your computational abilities. I think in the early days of uh, computational programs playing chess, a lot of the uh, value was just from, you know, these tree-based search methods and just not making mistakes and not going down lines that were that are just like kind of strictly bad. And then there's this sort of like intuitionistic part of chess where you see positions and you see, okay, that just doesn't feel right based on my repository of thousands of games or millions of games for the uh, Magnus Carlsons of the world or something like that, right? And that's where some of this like, you know, DQ learning comes from and the sort of like alpha go stuff. It's it's really just conditional on the board state. Is this a good position or not? And so they kind of combine those models. Whereas poker, it's a it's a game of incomplete information, right? And so you can't model these things com completely through. And this is much more uh, akin to the real world, uh, where you know in incomplete information sort of all over the place, right? And you have to you have to make these kind of risky decisions, risky in the sense that they're not always gonna gonna pay out, but uh, you need to make them to play like, you know, EV positive or like game theory optimal poker. You need to be bluffing some particular ratio. And if you're not bluffing, then you're like strictly losing because, you know, there, there, there are all these types of things that um, you, you, you learn from, from the game of poker that maybe you wouldn't get from a complete information game like chess. I fully agree. And one of the books I loved was um, Thinking in Bets by Annie Duke. Um, yeah. where she refers, where she applies the principles from her poker career, uh, to life. 